happy to be back in town. Um, we were in Mexico for a week, and uh, uh, okay, six days. My perfectionist wife's got to correct me. That's pretty much a week there, honey. It's pretty much a week. She said six days. All right, there's spots on the front row if anybody wants any. There's, there's the good, the juice gets on the front row. That's what you want to go for right there. Lots of spots on the front row. There's nobody sitting there, I don't think. Excellent. You guys feeling good today? Hallelujah. All right, hey, so we went on the, a trip to uh, Mexico to visit some of our missionary friends in uh, the state of Morelos in the, in the not city of Jujula, um, uh, who was greatly affected by the, the uh, earthquake two years ago. Check, check. Am I, am I on? Am I on? Am I good? Is there a sound man? Is there a sound man in the back? Can make sure I'm on. Because I'm on. I'm on. Hallelujah. 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 I feel it. 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 Any moment now. No? Yes? Do we have a sound man? Do we have a sound man? Can anybody figure out where the sound man? Check one. Michael Davis, can you help me out and find a sound man? Because we could use him to turn me on. Check one. Here we go. Uh-oh. 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 Check one. Hey. Uh. Brandon, good job. Thank you. Amen and thank you. Hallelujah. Probably a little too loud, but I'm okay with that. Sound man's back. Thank you, sound man. Worship's over. He's like, I got a break. No, no break. <laughs> Doctor pay for that. He doesn't get paid, so don't worry about it. So check it out. Um, so we went and we got some uh, uh, testimonies from our mission team uh, this morning. We had an amazing time. Not that exciting yet, but it will be. All right. So if you were in the meeting this morning, you know who you are. Why don't you come on up in the lineup right here? And we're going to share some testimonies from the team this morning. Brent, are you in here? Yeah, I want you to share the, share what you shared first service, the, the one though. Not the two, the one, because we got more people. Yeah, no, come on, come on. Well, let's kick it off, let's kick it off with Brent, shall we? So Brent is actually in seminary right now. I am. I am. <laughs> and, um, and that's what prepared him for Miracle Signs and Wonders. Sem sem mm, not so much. Not so much. No. Not, not as this much. This house prepared me to see Signs and Miracles. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, so you went uh, one day ministering in the hospital. Yep. Go ahead. Why don't you tell them the story? So myself, Kelly Silva, and... Macau, the uh, missionary from Slovakia, that's where he's from. So we're going to the hospital in Hohutla, and as we're walking into the, the check-in desk, I put my driver's license on the desk. I begin to feel this overwhelming pain in my right side of the rib cage and my lower right side of the back, and then I'm also having shortness of breath to the point I'm leaning over the desk. I'm like, all right, this is a crazy word of knowledge. Or... I'm like, or you're in the right place. Yeah, or I'm in the right place. <laughs> and they're going to check me in within the next, like, five, ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm hoping that's not the case. Because you don't want to get checked into that hospital. Don't need to get checked in. <laughs> I've had many words of knowledge in the past, but none this vivid. To where it's like, I literally took on somebody's pain wow. yeah. to, like, the nth degree. Yeah. So as I'm beginning to search, like, all right, who's this going to be for? The first room we walk into, there's this, this guy laying in the hospital bed. We begin to ask him like what's going on with him, and he has severe liver damage due to alcoholism, and he has a kidney issue that's affecting his lower back, and it's also so painful that it's affecting his breathing. So I'm like, it couldn't have been more of a red sign. It's like a giant red sign right there. So as I begin to take his hand and pray for him, for all the pain to go away, to God restore his liver. I feel Holy Spirit say, no, you touch the right side of his rib cage where the actual pain is. And as I put my hand and on Tell the, this part very clearly. You kind of rush through this part. All right. First service. Let's. All right. So as I place my left hand on the right, <laughs> the right side of his, of his stomach, of his abdomen, I begin to feel this like mass, so all these molecules or whatever begin to form on the inside of his stomach. And it's, it literally feels like a baseball is underneath his skin where my hand is, and I feel his stomach like pulsating. It was so bad that Kelly Silva was probably 
10 feet away and she sees his stomach like going like that. <laughs> so as I'm praying, I have no idea what this is. Honestly, it's freaking me out. <laughs> that's, my, that's my first reaction, being completely transparent. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, this thing's got to leave, whatever it is. So I pray that he's completely healed in Jesus' name and all the pain on the right side of his stomach leaves like instantly. <laughs> And then I still feel a little like pulsating in my lower right back, so I know there's a little pain there. And I had Mikel, the translator, confirm that he was still dealing with a little pain. So we prayed for that pain to go, the kidney pain, that completely was gone. But what makes the story, what makes the story even better is that him and his wife are in the room, and they're telling us about how much of a financial burden it's going to be to pay for the surgery the next day. So I think it was going to be like 1,000 pesos. So God restored his liver, restored his kidney. Didn't and Mikel, and Mikel, the missionary, is going to follow up. So stay tuned. That's pretty good, huh? That's pretty good, yeah? Kelly, come here. Come on, Kelly. Let me, let's, let's do this. Oh, you want the second part of that? I don't. You get one testimony. You can give whatever you want. Oh, man. There was if you a want lot. to give the second part, you do that. But. All right. So I'll just give a different one. So yeah. there was a time where we went to the marketplace. It was me, Mikey, and Mikel. And then we were going to meet up with his friend. She's like, oh, I have a friend here. Let's go meet with her. Turns out she's not there. But as we pass to go to her store, two stores down, pastor's favorite worship song comes on. Holy, holy, yeah. Are, yeah. that song in Spanish. So we're like, oh, we should go there and pray for him, pray for his business. So his friend turns out he's not there. We go back, pray for the business. And he's like, oh, this is my parents' place. This is crazy because I saw you guys have dinner last night in the marketplace. And I wanted to say hi, but I was working. And that's actually my aunt's store, too, that you guys were eating at. And then after... Testimony. We're getting to the testimony. Yeah. Ahead, and then... Yeah. But that, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So people, after people, that, after that, so we prayed for him. <laughs> and we were like, so what do you need prayer for? He's like, I just finished a course. And I'm trying to get a job at the fair, Federal Electricity facility there and it's really hard to get in so while we were praying for him I had like a vision that he was like Joseph and that um, God was going to give him a lot of favor in small places and Mikey got the same word too like a lot of favor he saw him going through doors and like really humbling himself and God's grace and glory just came down and he started crying he was like I can't believe this just yesterday I was asking God to speak to me audibly and I needed direction and I just wanted to hear his voice in the next day you answered like God is so great and Amen. God just he the whole point of this is that he cares about his children and yeah. he will answer Amen. anything that Give you guys have everybody come on Sylvie So, Sylvie, is this your first mission trip? This is my first mission trip. Yeah, did you have a good time? I had a wonderful time. It was awesome. It was awesome, right? Saw God do neat stuff? Amazing stuff. I wanted to see miracles, and I saw them. You saw them. Plural. Yes. Plural. Yes. We have a funny joke around here. Like, uh, we, we were coming back from one of our mission trips in Nicaragua, and uh, there was another team there leaving at the same time. And we were just like, hey, what'd you guys see? You know, and they're like, well, we painted this place, and... We're like, oh, that's that's awesome, and like we told, we were talking about one of our stories, and like, you saw a miracle? We're like, yeah, like today, like every day, everywhere we went, we saw miracles. So, so I'm glad you saw miracles. Um, I have more marketplace stories. So we prayed for this man in a wheelchair, and the obvious thing that you would why did you pray for him? Because he was in a wheelchair, or did somebody have a word? No, we just felt called to pray for him. Did the wheelchair call? Or did it? <laughs> well, let me get to that Go ahead, part. go ahead. Okay, because... You, don't, you only the, have so much time. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. You're doing good. You're doing good. You're doing good. Uh, the wheelchair might make you think that you should pray for pain, but instead we felt to pray for his relationships. Go ahead. And That's so good. That's we were good. praying for his relationships, and we asked him, is there anything else specifically you would like us to pray for? And he said, no, that's it right there. My children abandoned me, and I felt disconnected. And he, he said, can you follow me? And he starts rolling his wheelchair, and he's like, follow me. I have someone who I need you to pray for so that she would also be healed. And so we went to pray for this woman who had fallen off of a jitney, a, a micro boost. And she, her back was messed up. Her... Um, her, her legs were messed up, her 
um, her ankle, she had all this pain. She said that her, uh, they told her that she had had incredible nerve damage and we prayed for her and all of her pain started to dissipate. <laughs> so we prayed for her again and we asked her um, if, there, if she had forgiven the, the driver and she said, no, she hadn't forgiven him. And so we prayed that she would forgive him and we went through that with her. And we prayed one more time for healing. And she said that she felt incredibly relieved that something had been lifted Come off on. of her spiritually. Let me ask you a real quick, let me ask you a real quick question. Uh, do you do you minister to people for healing in their bodies a lot? No, no, no. <laughs> that, that wasn't like something you did a lot no. before you went on the trip. No. Did you see people get healed on the trip? When I did. You prayed for them. I did. Pretty fun, yeah. It was fun. We were praying on Friday night, El Noche de Fuego, and you were praying. We were praying for people that the Holy Spirit would come into them and remove their spiritual wounds, um, have them see themselves as God sees them. Um, that Shabbat. they would see themselves perfect and accepted, and they were falling on the ground, <laughs> knocked out, again and again and again. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. She was going to get back in line. Like, I got some more. I got some more to, to share. You right? Come on, Come on, Chelsea. So Chelsea preached, um, Chelsea preached, where did you preach? You preached at a church with at Paula, church. right? In, Qu in Cuernavaca? Yeah. How'd that go? That, that was like, oh, that was good. You preached good. I remember yeah, that. that. I that wasn't church, there, but. Yeah, the church, I guess, didn't evangelize at all, didn't go out in the streets, so. They picked the right preacher to come in. Yeah, <laughs> so it was definitely a point. They picked the right preacher to come. It was just a relief They picked to know. the right preacher to yeah, come. Yeah, I was very relieved that my message applied. And yeah, so people got wrecked, and the worship leader saw Jesus, and he was just wrecked. Like, we saw Jesus in front of him, and he was like, it was, he was a hot mess. He was just like, it was a life, you could tell it was going to be a life changing thing. they come unglued. Yeah. When people look like someone took the bones out of them. Yeah. After God's touch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess. And the team was amazing. They were laying hands on everyone. People were just out on the fire of God. It was it was awesome. A man got healed. Um, it was great. Hallelujah. It was great. Um, but the one testimony I want to share did was... Did Paula translate for you? Yeah, she did. Did she, she do her karate chop screams? She did in the beginning because there's warfare in the middle of service. Okay. This lady's a... <laughs> she's going to come here. and uh, She's she, amazing. <laughs> she's like, God. She went like, God to and me. It would be I ridiculous. Back. It would be ridiculous if people weren't flying, right? Like, I ran. <laughs> like, I ran. I was if, like, ah. If people go flying, do whatever you want. <laughs> They're not flying to shut up, please, yeah, right? It's, it's great. But they were flying. Yeah, so. she was a great translator, too. She was really she? kept up. Yeah. All right. She'll be here. So. Yeah, she's awesome. So uh, we, I went with her and Brent Shabba. to the brothel, and she's in charge of the brothel. Ah. She's been doing um, no, wait, wait, wait. She's not in charge of the brothel. She's in charge, in charge of, the of the brothel ministry. Ministry. I'm sorry. There's a yeah. difference. Brothel ministry. There's a difference. But speaking of There's that. There's a difference. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. She's in charge yeah. of the brothel yeah. Yeah. ministry. Yeah. 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 Thank yeah. you. Let's Thank you for having that me. A yes. Bit. yes, yes, <laughs> yes. It's amazing. And she keeps them women in line yeah. with the yeah. karate chop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. She's been doing it for nine years in Texas, so oh, she's wow. really awesome. Mm. And so we went with her, uh, Brent and I went with her, and um, the first lady we saw, I actually knew her from the last couple times, which was very encouraging to me. She recognized me. You saw, oh, so we went to the brothel one time, and Chelsea was ministering to this woman, and she, they became Facebook friends. <laughs> and they kind of followed up. So the first lady I saw was her, and she's like, hi, I'm like, hi. It was great. So... <laughs> It was really cool. She's trying to get out, um, but her dad got cancer, and she had a um, she had a st she well she felt like she was supposed to start working again, but she's trying to get out. So pray for her. What's her name? Uh, uh, Edith. Let's pray for her. Pray for her right now. Uh, Father, we lift get up Edith right now, Jesus. You got a job for freedom, her, God. Miracle money over her. her, Jesus. You got a job for freedom. her, Jesus. You got a job freedom for her. Freedom that you would give her a job, Lord. A job. Guide her path, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name, give her courage, God. Give her Amen. boldness to get out, God. Amen. Let her have faith to get out. In Amen. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Um, so... Uh, we went up, to, so there was a manager lady that manages all the brothel, 
rooms. So they pay her, they pay her rent, and we went up to her, Brett and I and the Paola. And she's like an older woman. She's like in her 60s, which is odd. You wouldn't think it was an older, like, grandma, but it was. And so we sorry, walked. Sorry, folks, in your 60s. <laughs> but you just, like, you wouldn't no think, like, this no great offense. gangster No offense. Lady. We believe you could run a brothel. We really do. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just you would, you would think it was just, like, some mean gangster old, you know, Dude, older guy. Yeah. yeah. No, so anyways. No. So um, she was there with her, some guy, maybe an assistant or whatever. So we um, went up to her. Uh, Paul no, no, uh, knows her, and we so we laid hands on her, and I just felt something God was going to do something in her heart. And then uh, Brent had a word of knowledge that she was carrying all this burden on her. I bet. So, um, so we prayed for her, and she started feeling freer, and then we asked her if she had any pain, and she had pain coming in her arms, like both arms. And uh, we prayed freedom over her. The pain went totally away. <laughs> this is the manager. The manager of the brothel. The manager of the brothel. She was, like, so shocked. Like, she was just so happy. She kept feeling her arms. She was, like, really shocked. And we asked the guy that was next to her to come over. Meanwhile, there's a police officer that's guarding her, and the brothel is illegal. Right. So that's even just a crazy circumstance yeah. to be in. So um, we preached the gospel to the guy, and he, get, he thought he was saved, but, you know, we told him the gospel. Well, then Chelsea showed up. Go ahead. And we told him that it's undeserving. <laughs> And that you can't earn it, and we just told him, and he gave. And so he gave his life to Jesus, and the manager gave his her life to Jesus. <laughs> Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! How about Jesus heals brothel owners or brothel managers? That's good word, huh? That's amazing, yeah. Wow. So I have a testimony from the first place that we went to go do street ministry. How many testimonies could you give, do you think? I have a testimony, like, for every five minutes yeah. on this trip. But my favorite one is this one. Were you there when they prayed for the kitchen staff at the hospital? The kitchen staff? No, I was in the maternity wing. No, at the hospital. At the hotel. Oh, kitchen. Why did I think hospital kitchen? No idea. Okay. Come okay. on, you got to interpret what I'm saying okay. by the spirit. <laughs> Okay. By the spirit, people. By the spirit. <laughs> no, I was. <laughs> were one I of you there? I, were one I, of you there? I walked in oh, and they were all on the floor. Okay, so yeah. we prayed for the kitchen staff. They weren't saved. They got saved. They were on the floor. Yeah. Well, go ahead. So uh, the first place we went to go do street ministry, all the local missionaries, they were like, so we brought you here because we believe you guys are like a hammer and uh, you guys can really break down some The witchcraft stuff. neighborhood. The witchcraft neighborhood. Oh, yeah. gosh. Yeah, that and was so, awesome. They're like, okay, if you're really, really bold and on fire for Jesus, go this way. If you're a little, like, nah, you'll go this way. So my team, we have Roger, Brent, and Paola. But we go this way. <laughs> and then, and uh, the, like two seconds after we went that way, we met uh, this dude. And we asked if we could pray for him or his family. And he was like, yeah, me and my mom are sick. And we're like, all right, is your, is your mom in this neighborhood? And he was like, yeah. I'll take you to her. So we go this way. <laughs> and, and, and to like the deep <laughs> and to the deepest part of like the witchcraft neighborhood. And she's in the back. He goes to get her. We're all praying in tongues. There's lots of like stray cats and there's no stray cats in Mexico. They're only in this area. And uh and so we're like, okay, Jesus. And uh, I got a word of knowledge that he needed prayer for his job as well. And uh we asked him what was going on with his mom, and he said that she would have bouts of anger, and it got so bad that his wife and kids actually left him. And he owns the house that he lives in, and his mom's staying there, so he's staying there. And so we also prayed for that. Um, and when the mom came out, she she looked miserable. like She was rough. And uh, Paolo translated that she had bipolar disorder. And I was like, all right, this is a divine opportunity because I used to have bipolar disorder. God healed me. Come on. So we're going to heal you. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so we prayed for her. She starts crying. She rededicates her life. And then we also lead her in forgiveness for her mom and whole family. And uh, just like the people told her all this stuff that happened to her was because of things that she did. And we're like, that's a lie. And so we broke all that off. And then as we go to pray for her son, she's praying behind us. Like She's praying with us. Wow. 
Come on. And uh, she, you could tell she was completely changed. She was smiling, happy, looked lighter. And uh, so we started praying for the son. And um, like I said, we had a word that we need to pray for his job. Brent saw construction. And he's like, I can't get this out of my mind. Like, are, are you in construction? And he was like, I can't. Like, I used to, but I got sick and stuff. And um, so we prayed for that and his job. And I started seeing that he was, like, God was the architect of the family, and he was the builder. And he had to, like, build up and support his family and, like, good bring word. it back together. And so we prayed for him. It was good. And then he came to Notre de Fuego wow. Friday night. Yeah. To sell, like, he had a ton of purses that he's been selling on the street because. Right. Um, Brent said, if you, if, you, if, yeah, I, if you come to Notre de Fuego, I'll buy a purse off of you. Yeah. And so he came to just sell one purse. But he bought, like, he brought all of the purses. And uh, he answered the altar call and was on the ground for, like, 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, and uh, it, it, he got healed of whatever he had. Like, yeah. They prayed. I don't. I don't. Rem- I didn't pray for him at Noche de Fuego, but he got healed. And so after service, like we had prayed that his business would multiply and that he would be able to sell all that stuff, and he sold like fifty purses. Like praise God. He sold like a million of them. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Come on, Chris. What you got for me, man? What you got, Chris? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hola, todo mundo. <laughs> So, tons of miracles, um, tons of miraculous things that God did. One specific thing that Jesus did, which totally wrecked me. On a night, Chelsea was preaching. She preaches fire, by the way. Shout out to Chelsea. Um, that it came ministry time. Um, we're all just going out, doing our thing. And there was a one guy, his name was David. He was wearing, like, a red sweatshirt. And I'm like, hey, man, like, what can I pray for you for? He's like, oh, I got an accident. Um, I fractured my hand. This is a good one. His hand, his hand was, like, right completely here. jacked up. Like, he couldn't even give me a high five. I'm like, his hand was just like this to give me a high five. So then Chelsea and I were praying for this guy. I'm like, on a scale of 1 to 10, where's your pain at? He's like, oh, my pain's like at a 7. It still hurts. Not really a lot of mobility. All right, we're going to pray again. We're going to see God do miracles because he did miracles before. We prayed again. It came down to a 2. And then Chelsea just kept ministering. And then Brent came over. I'm like, hey, what's Brent, up, Brent? Brent is the word of knowledge. Brent has He's been seeing some stuff on this trip. So this guy, David, you, just sitting you, here. You, y'all need to have, just invite Brent out to lunch. Invite Brent, man. Just ask him. Ask him for some stories. This man was he, walking around with a sledgehammer. Yeah, and just, just going after oh it. Oh, my gosh. So dude, David's just staying there receiving. Brent comes up and just puts his hand on his shoulder just like this. This dude feels electricity to go all throughout his body to his hand. God's hand completely healed. No pain. No pain whatsoever. And mobility. Right? Mobility was back. But wait, there's more. But wait. <laughs> About three minutes later, the dude comes up to me and prays, like, guys, come here. So we walk over. He's like, how do you guys operate in this, uh, this energy? What do you guys? And we're like, dude, it's not us. It's Christ in us flowing through us that heals you. This guy, backstory to this guy, David, he was searching, like, every type of religion to find God. Like, he was literally going after, going after it. So the point of it, man, no matter where you are in life, God's going to find you. He's going to touch come you. On. He's going to heal you. He's going to encounter you. Amen. You remember one more healing? You have one more healing testimony? Yeah. One more healing testimony. <clears throat> more. Um, we're one in more. the marketplace. Wow. And um, Shabbat. Uh, I don't know. Is Cassandra here? <laughs> What's up, Cassandra? So Cassandra was here. Um, we saw a dude walking. You can't he tell had, that guy. He you had, can't tell him. I'm going to talk about him later. All right. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, that's that guy. I got a picture of everything. Um, Actually, no, no. There's a, guy, there's a picture of a guy with crutches. Put him up. Okay, go ahead. All right, so this dude, check him out. Um, he had one crutch. He had one crutch, one and, one crutch cane. and one cane. That's so how he had to walk. Me- yeah, it was Mexico. It's, it's really bad down there. One crutch um, and one cane. We don't know cane. if he needed two crutches and only have one. We don't know exactly, but he yeah, was walking with a crutch He and was cane. walking, and then I'm like, Cassandra, let's go, let's go after this guy. We prayed for this dude. Well, here, here's the thing. Cassandra what? had a word of knowledge, but she was terrified <laughs> to do anything with it. And we're like, today's the day, Cassandra. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Today's the day. Like, what do you think? She goes, I think I have a knee, but I don't know what to do it. And then this dude comes up with one crutch and one cane. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like, we're talking about it, and this guy comes up. We're like, could be him. Might be God. <laughs> so they go up to minister. Go ahead. So, and then we see this guy. 
Um, we lay hands on him. We said, what happened? He's like, apparently he got, in a, uh, got hit by a car. He was a car. driving a motorcycle, yeah. and a truck ran, ran over, over him. him. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So That's having bad. a really hard That's time bad. walking. Had a hard time walking after yeah. that, yeah. <laughs> it had been we, six or eight years. Six uh, years, I think. Yeah, it was six years. Insane. So we lay hands on him. He immediately starts feeling the presence of God. We're like, what's happening? You know, on a scale of one to ten. Again, he was probably around a six or a seven. Um, all right, we're going to pray for you one more time. We prayed for him again. Um, he's like, wow, I just don't feel any. If he felt the presence of God, and he's like, I don't really feel any pain in my knee area. I'm like, all right, man, hand me your crutches, dude. We're going to see. We're going to check Jesus Let's out. Let's see what's up. Let's see what's up. Let's hand me his up. crutches. The man takes off his hat. His face, his whole entire countenance is completely changed. Like, completely. he's lit up. Come walk over here. The guy just started walking, man. It was, in, it was insane. All pain gone, completely healed. Amen. Amen. That was a pretty good time right there. You want to go before Andres? Okay, jump on. Sorry, Andres. Andres has got good stuff. Yeah. But I wanted to kind of jump onto that Put because... The back. Okay. So I told you, Cassandra was a little terrified. And um, for, for me, one really amazing part of the trip was seeing people who have not before operated in these kinds of gifts, getting words of knowledge, screaming fuego on people. And uh, like for me, it's exciting to see how much the team grows. Um, and as much as we were giving out, we were receiving. Like we were just receiving so much to be used by God. And it was really cool to see that. She wasn't terrified after that. Noche de Fuego, she was She's calling down. She was going in. So, yeah, it was really cool. And so I got to, um, you know, I, I, I did pray for people for physical healing and also emotional healing. And one night we were at um, a cell group where um, Christopher Rajkumar and Andres uh, preached, and it was really good. And, it was a um, church plant. It was a church plant. That's, they, they call it a cell group, but it was a church plant. Yeah, I mean, it was a lot of people for a yeah, cell group. Yeah, yeah, it was a church plant. And, um, and a guy, anyway. they have worship, and a guy preached the message, and there was an altar call. That's yeah, a, a and there was plant. an al- there was an <laughs> it's altar. A church plant. There was like an altar thing at the yeah. front, like a church. Podium. So a podium. Thank you. Here for you. So um, when I got there, now we are when we go there, Kaleo, one of the Kaleo churches is Kava, and they are I, I don't know if they're a larger church in the area, but they are our friends. It's Pastor Josue and his daughter and his wife, that we're all friendly with them. And their parents... It's 12 after, honey. Just okay. Uh, their parents are the leaders of the small group, of the, of the church plant. Yeah. And they're, the grandma, she's like this sweet little lady, and she comes up, like kind of, and everyone was helping her up to the front. She said that she had fallen in Walmart earlier that day. And so she was in a lot of pain. That's a store shoulder. they have in Mexico, Walmart. It's, Wa- Walmart. Uh, Walmart. So... <laughs> So she had pain in her um, in her her shoulder and her arm, and I prayed for her. Pretty quickly, it was just gone. She's like, ah, "Gloria a Dios." So that was cool. But then she, her, the lady, uh, one of the women comes over to me and says, "Well, she can't see that well either." And so I'm like, "What? How come you can't see?" She's like, "I have glaucoma." I was like, "Oh, that's different than falling in Walmart." Okay, here we go. Here we go. So, um, glaucoma, I, do you see a lot of that? Healed I don't, in your, no, I don't <laughs> have as much experience with that and not with the pastor's, with the pastor's wife. Like I just felt a little pressure, but, um, I prayed for her and as we were beginning to pray for her, she said she felt her eyes were hot. I was like, okay, that's encouraging. So keep going after, keep going after it. And then she would take off her glasses and test and she's like, mm, poquito, you know, not that much. And then she took her glasses off and looked and she's like, ah, mejor, mejor, mejor. <laughs> Mejor means better, by the way. Here, honey. Okay. Come on, Andres. <laughs> Give it up for Pastor Tracy. Andres is my, is my translator. <clears throat> I, uh, I would let them know. It was so funny. Um, uh, we, <clears throat> um, we go down there, and um, how do I say this? Uh, they have ideas, but we also have ideas. <laughs> And so they're like, these people are going to translate. It's like, no, actually, Andres is translating. Like, no, 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 they said this. Like, well, let them know Andres is translating, right? And so, like, they would have ideas about worship, and I would let them know that Mikey's going to play the keyboard. They're like, no, 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 he can't play the keyboard. And so, like, their band would play, and I'm like, all right, they've played long enough. Mikey, come up, right? Like, that's, right? But, but Andres did amazing even on his own. Right, come on. He did a great job. 
one of the testimonies in itself is just uh, how great of a pastor that we have. No, 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 no. Just, it's true. No, just, it's true. Just talk to that. I, no, no. Just talk to that. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Just tell the testimonies. No, no, no. No, just tell the testimonies. That was actually... Just tell the No. no. We love you, Pastor. <laughs> Tell us this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's true. That's one of the biggest things that touched my heart was what you just mentioned. Um, uh, but before this trip, there was a lot of warfare. And I felt like for me, I was getting a, like a lot of fear and just different things of what could happen. Um, and I remember, because I work in customer service, I was talking to somebody who lives on the Mexico border. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to Reynosa, this and this. And they're like, don't go. And they're like, J yesterday, this and this happened. And I'm like, oh, great. That's good to know. Thanks. But I knew I was supposed to go on the trip. So I'm like, all right, I, I feel the fear, but I know I'm supposed to go. And um, I remember the, f the first thing that happened after we left the airport, we got pulled over by the police. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and at that moment, every thought that I was like pushing away was coming back. I'm like, oh, my gosh, we are probably going to go to jail. <laughs> Andrew Brunson, oh Lord, <laughs> like different things. I'm like, okay. But I remember um, I felt like I had a choice. And I was like, I could en entertain those thoughts or I can just encounter Jesus. And I feel like God made it so easy to encounter him. Like I just started singing in the spirit. And something that Pastor preached a few weeks ago was um, how Jesus is King of King and Lord of Lords. And that how when um, John was caught up, he got to peek into heaven and he could see that was settled. Um, and I felt that same thing, like, it is settled. Like, okay, Amen. we're pulled over. All this is happening. It is settled. And I just was encountering God's peace. Like, it just kept flowing. I'm just singing. I look out the bus window. I see, like, butterflies in the air. And I'm like, <laughs> this is amazing. Um, and, like, I just I got, like, these thoughts of hope. Like, imagine if they get called away to go do something else. Imagine, right. like, you know, you're going to be fine. And then, literally, that's what happened. Well, well right? <laughs> what the backstory is, they were waiting for a bribe. Yeah. They pulled us over because there was no license plate on the trailer we had, and they wanted a bribe. And they just, as missionaries, like, we, we, we're not going to bribe you. We were, we're not going to bribe you. Yeah. And so they were kind of discussing, you know, take you to jail. We can do what we need to do. And, uh, and they said no. And uh, eventually, uh, they wanted a bribe, and we said no. And we wound up praying for the police. The, the, the missionaries wound up praying for the police before we left. But go ahead. Yep, and that, that was everything. They got prayed for, they left, and we just... Yeah, they got called away. Like, in the minute, there's like, oh, there's an accident. You're lucky. We have to leave. And then they, out of nowhere, they left. They said, well, you're free to go, but make sure, make sure you know, you do whatever. So, so we got out of that. No, you got, you got a better testimony than that. Come on. You saw a lot of miracles. Go ahead. Well, uh, all right. The first day when we went to that, like, witchcraft neighborhood... Um, that morning, Josh texted me. He said, um, I feel that God's going to use you to, to heal like blind, uh, deaf ears. And so I'm like, okay, well, let's go. And so I was with Sarah and with Ro. And we go into this shop, this just like regular store, and we're praying for the shop owner there, you know. And then we're blessing her. We're really not getting a leading, you know, just blessing her. I think Sarah had a few visions for her. Um, and then we see her daughter, who's maybe like 9 or 10 years old, and she's like signing to her mom, like talking to her. And I remembered, I'm like, oh, wait, you know, I don't, I told her directly, I don't want to be disrespectful in any way. I just want you to know, like, my friend texted me saying that God is going to heal deaf ears. Is it okay if we pray for your daughter? Um, and she asked her, I'm like, could you ask her? And she asked her and she said, yes. So we pray for her. And the first time we pray, she begins to hear like a sound in her right ear, just like a noise. And so we're like, okay, something's happening. Let's do it again. We prayed a second time and nothing happened. But Sarah had a vision of Jesus like cupping her ears. So we're like, could you ask your daughter if it's okay for us to cup her ears and pray for her? And Sarah did that. And once she prayed, we kind of just did one of these. And you could see like her face. She's just like, she was smiling. And she does like a sign to her mom, and her mom is smiling, and they're both like talking to each other, like, okay, this something just happened. Hallelujah! <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Something happening she started hearing? Is that she started hearing? Okay, yeah. well, that's a good end to the story there. Yeah. Give it for Andres, everybody. <laughs> Real quick, we normally don't do anything fun on mission trips, like because we don't stay that long. And uh, but this time they had a uh, again 
um, I like to set the agenda. And so they had on our agenda uh, on Thursday morning, I think it was, or Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, we were going to work on their missions base, like do gardening and uh, clean up. And I was like, we didn't actually bring any gardeners. Uh, and uh, how about we just give you an offering? You pay somebody to do that. And we go do something fun that morning, right? And so we went to this place where there's these natural springs. And I'm like, is there something we can jump off of into water? They're like, yeah. I'm like, that's our spot. Let's do that. So we did that for a long time. And there's a place where you can kind of wade in the water. And so while we were there, Andres and Chelsea start witnessing to the, to the people out there also in the water. And we wound up leading some people to salvation. And we water baptized them while we're hanging out in this water. <laughs> Okay, take down the flesh. Take down the flesh. That's enough flesh. All right, thank you. Excellent. If you got a Bible, you can turn to Matthew uh, chapter 10. I am, I am only going to be a moment. Um, I'm not going to keep you here long, I promise you. Um, uh, crutches, cane, mechanic. Kevin Vargas is not here. Are you, is he still home on the mend? All right. So uh, I, uh, as you turn to Matthew chapter 10, we had a really cool, um, we were walking around the demon neighborhood and... Uh, it was really not a good time. Uh, overall, it was really, really hard there. And uh, Kevin and I, it's, it's, this is kind of cool and funny at the same time. <clears throat> I'm going to tell it very quickly because I want to teach something real quick. Um, there was a guy who was a mechanic who was working on a car. We asked him, is there anything wrong? We could pray for you. We had a word of knowledge about his knee. And uh, in 1996, uh, when he was living in the United States, he got run over by a truck or hit by a truck. One or the other destroyed his pelvis. And, uh, and so, yeah, knee, right? And so um, we prayed for him, and uh, he said he, you know, has, takes pain pills every day, and uh, he got just gloriously healed, which was awesome. And he kept saying, I couldn't do this. I couldn't do this. We're like, no, no, we totally believe you. He's like, no, I couldn't do this. I couldn't do it. I'm like, no, no, I, I heard you the first time. I, we just, I'm tired. It's a demon neighborhood. I'm doing a lot of spiritual warfare. I'm really excited, even though I don't look excited, right? And so, like, he's just so very excited uh, that God had healed him. Here's the funny part. We give you all the, uh, the mountaintop things. Kevin, like, sees the guy walking, and one leg's a little shorter than the other. And Kevin's like, well, he's healed the knee. He's got hip problems. He's clearly going to stretch out his leg. And so the guy goes to sit down in, his, in the truck he's working on. I said, Kevin, don't touch this man until you're filled with faith. See, Kevin had not recognized that on the man's, the man had a shorter left leg, and so he kind of walked like this. But he, Kevin didn't notice, I did, that the guy had, like, a five-inch platform under his left foot. So we're talking about a good seven-inch stretch this man was going to need. Now, I got faith for about an inch, inch and a half. I don't got seven-inch faith, but I'm like, man, Kevin, if you got seven-inch faith, man, I'm with you, but don't touch him until you get faith. So Kevin gets the guy to sit down, and he leans down, and he grabs his foot, and for the first time, he sees the platform. <laughs> and then I'm just like, come on, bro, let's do it. Kevin prayed so hard he was sweating. I thought he was going to sweat blood at any moment. I thought Elisha and Moses were going to show up. <laughs> was... Needless to say, the man was happy that he was able to walk without pain after that, and he still has his platforms. Hallelujah. So, you know, not, not everybody gets healed. Amen? Uh, but we said, Jesus still loves you, and uh, come to church. And he said, amen, I will. So Matthew chapter 10, I'm going to go very, very briefly here. We saw a lot, a lot, a lot of people get healed, a ridiculous number of people get healed, and some didn't. Why did the ones who didn't? I don't know, uh, but I know a bunch did, and I rejoice in that, and I believe that more will. And I believe some got healed after, you know, they woke up in the morning yesterday, and they were healed, or today they're getting healed, or they get plugged into a church, or, or, or you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, but I know God heals. Amen? Amen. We had a good time, though. Matthew chapter 10, I'm going to read just a few very brief uh, verses here. Uh, uh, I'm going to start in uh, 5, but you're going to start in 7. Uh, Jesus uh, sent out the 12, and he instructed them, verse 7, As you go, preach, <clears throat> saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, cast out demons. Freely you received, freely give. Now, it's funny. He said preach, and then he gave several examples of what preaching looks like. Right? Preach, several examples of what that looks like. Now, we need to preach the Word of God. We need to tell people about Jesus. We need to understand. I find it extremely profound that Jesus loved both the prostitute and the woman who is owning the prostitutes, that he healed them both. I, I just think in that is just beyond our capacity to love. It's beyond our capacity for compassion. I just, 
we want to punish one and we want to rescue the other. And the one is there just like a job. The other one's there just like a job. And they're both in sin. And Jesus loves them both. It's just, it blow, come on, it just, it's, it's a, like, like they say in that hill song, you know, it's, it's a grace that could never add up, you know, it just doesn't, it just doesn't make sense, but Jesus, that's just the love that he walks in, and so we just really believe that God will give people words, like, um, I heard Randy Clark years ago say, uh, you know, um, I take people to Brazil to get them activated in the gifts, and I was just like, I could probably do that, and so I just started taking teams to Nicaragua, and it started happening. Um, and so that's why we go on these trips to get people activated. We want people to experience God and operate in the presence and power of God. <clears throat> I want to tell you a quick story. Um, um, you know, we get nervous about what's going to happen, but in, in Matthew chapter 10, he sends them out. And then he says in verse um, 19, he says, When they hand you over, don't worry what you're going to say, for it will be given to you in that hour what you are to say. For it is not you who speak, but it is the spirit of your father who speaks in you. Right? It's the spirit of your father who speaks in you. We've got to have a relationship with the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. If there's anything we've been talking about for months now, it's you need the Holy Ghost. We need to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. So we, were, uh, we preached at a church. Um, one night we split up. Chelsea went to one church. I went to another church. We like to call our team the A-team. Not, 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 not for any specific reason. We just called our team the A-team. Uh, and uh, A for Andres because he was on our team. Um, <laughs> Um, so we were um, we went to this 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 church, and uh, we like to say there was how many people? Less than a thousand people there, right? Less than a thousand. It was about fifty, right? But but it was less than a thousand. Um, you know, we're counting it like missionaries. <laughs> we're counting the people, the angels, <laughs> the testimonies to come. You know. Um, and so <clears throat> this was really cool. The, the worship was um, not, it was good, but for whatever reason, I could not sense the presence of God at all. Uh, and so Sarah, um, Sarah was dropping prophetic bombs everywhere we went. God was using Sarah in profound ways, uh, in bo- both prophetically and uh, in healing. It was really just for many people, uh, but really kind of stand out like abnormally powerful was Brent. Uh, and, and, and Sarah, um, just really abnormal, the, the level, um, but although many, many, many healings. So uh, Sarah was with me because I'm, if I'm ministering, I'm bringing the person who's dropping bombs, right? Um, <laughs> Chelsea was going to the other place, and Brent's a big guy, so I wanted Brent to be with Chelsea uh, and their team just because he's, he's imposing, if nothing else, right? <laughs> so even, you know, <laughs> right? Even if he's not going to spiritually do something, he can just physically be there and say No. So, um, so, so I'm expecting Sarah to kind of, you know, kind of carry me. And I'm like, Sarah, what you got? And like, I'm like, I'll make her prophesy to start the service, you know. Uh, what you got? She's like, I don't got nothing. I'm not feeling nothing. I'm like, all right, so uh, what are we going to do? So worship ends, and I get up, and I say, okay, uh, have you guys ever heard of words of knowledge? No, we never heard of words of knowledge. So I tell them very, very, very briefly, uh, you know, we're going to call out some things, and if you have this problem in your body, we want you to stand up. So we started calling out uh, several ailments. Uh, and uh, people started standing. Uh, one was like a pain in the neck. One was like a shoulder. We're like, that's you. Put your hand up. And so this one was like, you know, that's me. And we you know, figured she was shy. It's me. All right, okay, you know, be bold. Uh, and so we have them stand up, and uh, they had no idea what words of knowledge were. So we started telling them. I preached three, maybe four minutes, I mean, ridiculously briefly on what words of knowledge for healing are. And we tell them, hey, God is not a gossip. He would only tell us what's going wrong with you if he wanted to heal it. It's the only reason he would tell us. He wouldn't tell us it just so, you know, there would be something bad to say about you. It's only because he wants to heal it. And so if you're standing up, we believe that's because Jesus spoke to us by his spirit that tonight is your night to be healed. And so we just feel like that's going to happen. And then I said, now, go ahead and check your body and see if anything is different. And so if, you're, if something's different, I want you to wave at me. And the shy lady is now waving at me. I'm like, cool. Uh, if, you know, if you feel like things are better, I want you to come up. And we had like, I don't know, three people come up out of the, uh, the, the maybe dozen or so that, that stood. And the lady who, who, who waved at me real timid at first, she gives her testimony and she says, well, I couldn't use my shoulder so I could only wave like this. But now I could do like this when I wave to you. And that was cool. That was cool. But she said, no, but I had a goiter on the back of my neck this big and now it's gone. I'm like, 
right? That's pretty good, right? I, that's pretty good, right? And so then we had another lady who, like, her arm was dead and it couldn't move. She, and I don't know, there was like three, I don't know, maybe four people uh, were completely healed. And then I'm telling them, and there were still people standing. It's like, you know, what's kind of neat about this is we haven't actually prayed for healing yet. Yeah. All I did was told you what a word of knowledge was and people are healed, right? So probably going to be a good night tonight, right? We're probably going to have a good time in here, right? And so they got excited. And so then we actually started praying for people uh, to be healed. And, uh, and, and all in all, uh, you know, I, I had people come up, give testimonies. We had, I don't know, 13, 14 people. Uh, I don't know how many came up at that point who got completely healed. And it was just really significant stuff, long-term stuff, old stuff, big things. Um, the, so they got healed. So I'm like, all right, this is going to be a pretty good service. We're pretty happy about that. And so um, I went ahead and I, and I preached the gospel. Um, I don't even know what I preached. I probably preached on the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Uh, pro- talked about, you know, having a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And, um, and then we had ministry time. And uh, when we started the ministry time, after I was done preaching, uh, it was like someone lit a bomb off in the room. You know what that's like, right? And it was like a bomb went off and just bodies everywhere and uh, just falling on each other. It was glorious, right? Like it was just wonderful. And they would get up and I'd say, hola, senora. And they'd go, <laughs> and they get up again, like, hola, senora, ¿cómo estás? Oh! <laughs> back to the ground, right? They're like, where are you going? And then they'd fall back down. And, um, and so that went on for a long time. We had a really good time. We had some super, super, super significant inner healings, which I love, um, some heart healings, some prophetic words. People got physically healed. It was super awesome. But I was super tired, and I was trying to be very, very careful not to almost die from the food on this trip because I've had that happen before, and we were like, like, oh, that lettuce looks amazing, but I know you washed that in the same water that you use the bucket to flush the toilet with, and I'm just not going to eat the lettuce if that's okay. Stomach thing, please, no. And so they, um, you know, they feed you at the church after the service. That's where the food is, and, uh, and, and not for nothing. I don't like eating dinner at 10 o'clock at night, right? Like, that's not when I want to be eating tacos, right? Like, I don't want to have tacos at 10 o'clock at night with toilet water lettuce, right? Like, it's just not... It's, it's not, it's not, this is not what I want to eat, right? But they're so beautiful to you. They're so nice. They're so polite. You want to, you kind of want to, you want to honor them. You know, the scripture that says, you know, eat what's placed before you, that, that wasn't written to me. I don't know who that was written to, but that wasn't written to me, right? That, uh-uh, no, thank you. you. If y'all got Walmart, you can get me some packaged food. That's how I feel, right? So uh, it's just, you know, and so I'm trying not to get sick. I'm only here for six days. I'm not trying to bring anything home, right? Um, And so I'm exhausted because it's like night number four. Uh, I've been ministering, like just completely wiped out, Uh, ministered for a very long time. And then, uh, you know, they're they're, they're serving me the the cholera, you know, uh, food there. And uh, I'm trying to avoid it. Um, And and so we're tired. I'm ready to go home. I'm soaked from ministry. It's very late. And there was this cute little girl there. She was like, um, what was her name? Do you remember her name? Huh? Dana? Donna, I was like, Donna was like five, right? And she was there when we got there. And she was like playing. You know when like little kids want you to notice them? Yeah. And so like they'll carry their little toys near you and go like this. <laughs> like I don't want to tell you I want you to pay attention to me, but I really want you to pay attention to me. So, so I finally, after a while of her doing this before the service, I say to Sarah, you know, hey, you know, girl's trying to get our attention. So Sarah, the child whisperer, sits down. And she's playing with this little girl for a long time. girl was super, super cute, super nice. Uh, after service, the girl is still out there. It's like 10 o'clock at night now, right? And she's just as, just, just as loud as she was earlier, just super loud. And she's marching around singing her Christian songs and doing the, I'm in the army of the Lord. Hey, men, adios, you know, like doing this thing and yelling it. And it's 10 o'clock at night, and I'm thinking, like, where are her parents? Like, like. Now's a good time to put your five-year-old to bed. You know, I don't know, 10, 10, 30, walking around outside barefoot. Now would be a good time to put your kid to bed. And so one of the guys who's with us there, the, um, one of the Kaleo ministry people, they say, um, you know, she talks really loud because her parents are deaf. I'm like, oh, she never had parents tell her to be quiet, right? So make makes sense. You know, that's kind of good, right? Kind of bad, but, but kind of good, right? Because she can just be as loud as she wants to be. Anybody with a loud child understands it would be great if you didn't hear the loud child but you don't want to be deaf, right? So it's, there's kind of a, and so, and so it turns out that the pastor, you know, the pastor's out of town, the pastor's wife was there. Um, 
Her son is completely deaf, married a completely deaf woman who had a child, and that's this girl, Donna. And so um, if you understand, if you've ever been to Latin America, often the churches will be kind of like a compound. There's like the little church building, and there might be some other little buildings, and like there's the house connected to the church. It's like a little compound. And so, uh, and so we have been there uh, seemingly for you know, two days at this church now, and um, I'm ready to go home. I, I'm trying to get away from the food. I just want to go eat a power bar and go to sleep, right? And so um, the lady says, uh, the, 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 the missionary says to us, Luigi, he says, like, hey, do you want to go pray for a deaf couple? And I'm like, no, I'd like to go home now. We just had a healing service. That would have been a great place to bring the deaf couple where people were getting healed when I was still awake, right? Like, that'd be a good time to bring them. I want to go home. I want to, like, we'll have a service tomorrow. Going to be amazing. Probably get healed then. Let's just go home, right? Uh, and, but, uh, but unfortunately, the Lord brought some people who care about folks. And so Kevin <laughs> and Andres were like, yeah, we'll go pray for him. And uh, Kevin got really touched in the serve, in the, in the, on the trip, and he wanted to pray for everybody. So it's late at night. I got my backpack on, and I'm standing by the van, passively, aggressively being like, here's how we leave, right? Like, I'm ready to get in, ready to get in the van, ready to get in, right? My wife's tired. I'm not even, like, they're, like, from here to there, and I'm just like, okay, get frustrated. Let's go. Like, I'm ready. To, I'm like, like, they're completely deaf. They've never heard in their entire lives, and I'm ready to go home, right? Like, and so I'm like, do the thing. Now, these are spirit-filled pastors, and every, every, like, they're part of um, Kaleo, which is the organization we're with, and so they get lots of international speakers that come through this little church uh, that pray for them, like Patricia Bootsman had just been there, and just lots of people, and so these, this, this couple, like, they've been prayed for a bunch of times, and, like, it's just part of their, like, how they pay rent, like, okay, everybody's got to pray, pay, pray for us, you know, like, I get it, all right, and so they bring the missionaries out, and like, okay, here we go, I'll be your little, you know, you'll be your dancing monkey, go ahead, pray for the deaf guy, you know, like, they're just standing there, like, I'm ready to go home now, right, and so <clears throat> uh, they're, they're getting prayed for, and I'm ready to leave, and it starts feeling like there's a bug crawling in my left ear, and I want to pull it out so bad. It itched so bad. I wish I was just wanting to pull it out. Now, Luigi is super, super, super prophetic. I got my backpack on. I'm ready to go, and I tell Luigi, my left ear itches so bad, and I know we're praying for deaf people, and my ear itches. I'm not, I'm not a complete idiot, right? And so, and so, he, so Luigi looks at me and he goes, oh, you're not going home yet. And he takes off my backpack and he's like, we're praying for the people. I'm like, okay, we'll pray for the people. And so we go over there and we start praying. We're praying, praying, praying. These, these, this couple they've never heard. And they say, oh, it feels a little better in my right ear. Like they know how to encourage people is what it felt like. Like, oh, it feels a little better in my right ear. Like, oh, appreciate that, but I don't really need encouragement. I want to go home, so please be healed or tell us to stop. That's, that's like where I'm at, right? So we're praying. Praying, 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 praying. You could tell they wanted to go to bed. I wanted to go to bed, right? And so I say to them, listen, I tell you what, is it okay if we pray for two more minutes? Pray for two more minutes, and then you can go, right? Is that okay? And they're like, well, like just two minutes. All we want is two minutes. And so they talk to them, and they're like, like, okay, you can pray for two more minutes, right? So we're praying for this deaf couple in the middle of, you know, Mexico, nowhere Mexico. The daughter's over there marching around, singing somewhere over there. And Mikhail is chasing her around the table. I'm so annoyed because it's late and they're yelling over there, running around like, we've got deaf people over here. Just pray in tongues at least, you know, like to help me out, help a brother a little bit, right? And so they're over there being loud and we're praying for this deaf couple. And I'm getting a little annoyed, uh, but my left ear is itching so badly. And they keep going, well, my right a little bit. And I'm like, I don't, I, I think I'm positive they're lying, right? Like, this, let's get this done with, right? And so finally, like the ear thing on my left, they're talking about the right, but my left is, is, and so the husband was here, the wife was here, and I just turned to the woman, I just said, Jesus! And when I said that, she jumped, right? And I was like, and then just like faith came over me, and I said, go get their daughter, go get the daughter, go get the daughter. And so um, the lady, um, um, Luigi's wife, Ro, runs and, and stops McCall with the playing, gets the daughter, brings her daughter over and says, say mama. And the little girl said, Mama. And the mom's face lit up. <laughs> and she like, it was the first time in her life she'd ever heard her daughter's voice. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And then she said, Papa. And, the bo- and then she, 
The guy looked, and like his face was flush. And the little girl starts dancing. My mom can hear. My mom can hear. My mom can hear. And, and it was it was Michael. It was Mikey, myself, and Sarah, and Andres, and Kevin. And at the very same moment, when the girl's uh, face lit up, all three of us, me, Sarah, and Michael, is like I, I can't even describe to you what this felt like. We both had to, we all three at the very same moment had to turn away. It was almost like the holiness of God. Not, I mean, not even the miracle, not the power, not the electricity. It was like the holiness of God just landed in this one spot. And it felt so holy. I, like, I couldn't even look at it. I, I didn't even know if I would ever be able to tell this testimony. I was like, I, I, can't, I, just, I can't even look at this right now. It is just so holy. This moment is so holy that I can't like, we're, Michael and I got, we, we got back in our room that night. And we're like, I, I can't like, for the first time, it made sense when they said all the works of Jesus, the, the books of the world cannot contain them. It wasn't the volume. It's like words cannot contain the amazingness of God and what he does in our midst. It was like just words failed what it was like to watch a woman for the very first time in her life hear her daughter say, Mama. We were just wrecked. Just absolutely wrecked. Like, like, like just... If I'd have just had the goiter, like I'd have told that story a lot longer, right? And like that would have been the, and that would have been enough for that meeting. Like that would have been enough. Like the meeting was already amazing, and when he blew up the meeting, that would have been enough. And like I didn't even want to pray for these people. I mean, deep in my heart, of course I did, but I didn't even want to pray for these people. I wanted to go home, and yet and still, just like the prostitute, just like the brothel manager, God went way beyond my issues and poured out His grace. Beyond my capacity to love, it, it, I, 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 I don't know. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's more than I can even describe. Um, and so we brought the mom over and said, "Come, let's. Why don't you watch this?" And so we first tro- told the dude to try to talk, and he he didn't know how to make sounds, right? And so. When we started talking to them again, we're talking. He's like, we're, we're all around. We're rejoicing, celebrating. The, the guy's going, shh, because it, it was like too much for him. Like he'd never heard before. And all this input was like he's covering his ears. He's asking us to be quiet because he didn't know how to process all this stuff that was going on. And his mom is losing. We got a, we got a video uh, uh, testimony. I'm not going to show it because we don't have it ready. But we actually have it on video of the guy testifying of it. And so here, here, here's what I would like today. Um, we love miracles at Revival Life Church, not because we're looking for a notch in our belt. That's like, that is, it's not about us. It's about, it's about the glory of God on display in the earth. It's about people knowing Jesus. It's about people knowing Jesus. So why don't you stand with me real quick, and um, we're going to pray. And I went a little longer than I meant to, but uh, mission team, if you're here, come on forward, please. And here's what we want. We just want to release to you what, we, what, we, what, what God had freely given us in this service. And I just feel that God, God wants to touch some people. He wants to share his glory with some people. Is that my mission team? All right. Let's pray. All right, here we go. Hallelujah. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, you're just a really, really amazing God. You're really amazing. And Lord, it's not our goal to out-convince people or out-argue people or out-righteous people. It's really our goal just to love people and let them see you. And Father, I pray that you would increase our capacity to love You would increase our capacity to bring you into the room with people who need to know you. Father, I pray today that these uh, testimonies will stir up a hunger in people's hearts for more of your presence and the ability to manifest your power on the earth. In Jesus' name. And everybody said?